I love teaching pronunciation. I love reading about teaching pronunciation and I love speaking about teaching pronunciation. So today I'm going to talk about teaching pronunciation. Okay? Um, today I'm going to focus on paperless pronunciation, meaning uh, no photocopies, uh, no kind of panicking, do I have enough, do I have too many, um, no going into the classroom with a big pile of paper. It's about focusing on your learners, on what they need, um, and having a bit of fun as well. Um, I'm going to give you five different activities that you probably know already, probably from uh, recycling or revising vocabulary, but I'm just um, kind of adapting them so that they're, you know, to, to, to use them as, um, for pronunciation purposes. Um, one thing I think is really important when we're talking about pronunciation is not, we're not teaching an accent. Okay, so three of the activities I'm going to show you are based on practicing uh, sounds. Um, but we're not teaching people a specific accent. We're not trying to get them to make a sound the particular way that I make it. Because in this very room, we have loads of different accents and loads of different variations of um, sounds. Okay, uh, But what we do want to do is we want to build our learners' intelligibility. So if they're, for example, at the famous E and I sound, uh, to avoid embarrassing situations and using um, the wrong sound, I'm not going to say because I'm on the camera, um, but I know th maybe you can think of a few different examples. For example, the beach, yes. okay? Uh, or talking about peace on earth, okay? Um, but it just means it's not going to, it's going to give our, our, our learners the opportunity to not put themselves in those embarrassing situations. Situations, um, and it's going to build their confidence. Okay, and I think that's a really, really important thing is that pronunciation teaching makes our learners more confident. Because one thing often in in needs analysis forms, uh, the students will always tick the pronunciation. Yes, I want to learn or I want to improve my pronunciation. Okay, um, I think as well with uh, pronunciation. Um, Again, it is coming away from, from handouts and things like that, games and activities tend to last longer in the mind, you know, so they're more memorable. Um, so if it is fun, it's going to be more memorable for the students and they're hopefully going to actually remember what they're learning rather than, oh no, I, you know, I uh, had that handout uh, about something to do with pronunciation, but I can't really remember what it is. But if it's, I played this game, and I remember my team won um, because we were practicing rather than reading and writing. We were actually practicing something. Hopefully, they're going to, to remember it more. Um, also, the games I'm going to, to show you or the activities I'm going to show you, they can be um, either planned. You can plan to do them so they can be part of your lesson plan. Um, as well, especially if you know your learners, their L1 and what particular uh, problems they're having. Um, you can build that into your plan. But sometimes you're in class, you're looking at vocabulary, and you can just see that they're struggling with it. So all of these activities, the only thing you really need is a whiteboard and, and a marker and yourself and the learners. Um, so if you feel that on just there, on the spot, you say, okay, no, we can't go on because we're all kind of, there's a breakdown in communication. Let's have a look at it and, and, and let's try an activity. So the first three activities I'm going to show you are based on sounds or looking at uh, practicing sounds. And the second two are going to be about word stress. Okay. So the first one here, I know we all use Jeopardy for vocabulary. Um, and we have usually a point system and things like that. This is a very simple, um, a very simple game that you can have by going five, five by five, five down, five across. Um, you can choose whichever particular sounds your learners are having trouble with. So, for example, p and f, uh, maybe for Korean speakers, you've got ch, sh, uh, and s, maybe for for Spanish speakers. Um, and then we have a selection of different vowels up the top, depending on again whatever it is your your learners are having trouble with. Um, what I do then is I'll divide the class into different teams, okay, and I'll assign each team a colour, if you have one. If you don't have different markers, if you've only got a black marker or a blue marker, you can have different, uh, maybe different symbols, you know, or, or A, B, C, D, for example. In this case, I've just used different colours. So you'll go to the first team, and they have to say, okay, I want uh, E, 
and you say, okay, so it's, it's going to be this space here, and then they have to come up with a word that contains both of those sounds. Mm -hmm. Okay? If they come up with the correct word or a word that does contain those sounds, you can write it in their colour um, and we know that they've won that, that space. If they can't think of something, you go up all, over to the next team and if they can think of one for the same space, then they win. They win the point. The sounds don't have to be in any particular order. So, for example, in, in the first one, you've got consonant and then vowel. But here, for example, for ouch, uh, you've got your vowel and then your consonant. So the, the order of them isn't really important. The idea then at the end is just that you count up the number of spaces that which team uh, was able to think of, uh, of the, the, the most number of words. Okay? Um, phonemic hangman, I love phonemic hangman, and I know there's lots of kind of debates of, over whether uh, hangman is, is, has any kind of pedagogical benefit. However, I do believe phonemic hangman does, okay? Um, and here, what's great about it is it's not just from a production point of view, but it's that receptive, uh, those receptive skills. Because, for example, if a student says, so I always try to get, you can have the teacher maybe do one example, okay? Um, but you can also have the, the student stand up at the board. So first of all, you're writing your, your, your spaces down here for your transcription. Um, and again, you can do it in teams. So one team has to say, uh, for example, they'll say A. Um, and I'm going to, you probably can't see it here, but I'll write up that sound here. But maybe they might say, no, not A, I want the other A. And you're like, what other A? Uh, and maybe what they really wanted was they wanted I or, or something like that. So they were, were able to see that there is some kind of a, a breakdown between what they're hearing and what they want to produce. Um, it's really, it, it can be really fun. It, it, they do get very competitive. You can add another level of challenge and inc include your stress marks if you want your primary or secondary stress as well. Um, and of course, it can be done in groups. You know, it doesn't just have to be done as a whole class. You can do it in separate groups. But then you need paper, so that it's not paperless. Okay. Um, for the purpose of this presentation. Many whiteboards. Uh, many whiteboards. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay. So that's that one. Uh, noughts and crosses, so there's a couple of different ways you can play this. Um, in this particular one, so we've got the different, uh, we're focusing on different vowel sounds there. Um, again, you can divide the, the class into teams. And the first uh, team will choose a sound, so maybe they want a, ah, and you say, okay, a, ah, and they have to come up with a word, or they have to say a word that contains that vowel sound. If it's correct, they, if they're the X team, for example, you put an X. Uh, there in that space. Mm -hmm. Then the next team, it's their turn, uh, and they might say O oh, because they want to block them doing a diagonal. So then they have to think of a word that has the, the sound O oh in it. If they get it right, then they put their, their circle there. So the idea is that you're going to get your three, either your vertical, horizontal, or diagonally. Um, you can also change this a little bit and not have anything in the spaces. Um, and it could be something like uh, again, having your two teams, and they they decide, let's say again, they want this space here, um, and then the teacher might read out uh, four words. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have a target sound, and then they have to say which one of those words does not contain that target mm -hmm. sound. If they choose the correct one, then they can put their X or their O in the space. You can do the same with stress words. You can do the same with uh, maybe linking phrases with, with some kind of connected speech or something like that as well. Okay. Uh, stress chairs. I love stress chairs. So much fun. So simple, and you don't even you don't need anything. You just need your students and some chairs, which you all have because you're in the classroom. Um, you can use this to either to demonstrate uh, the stress of words. Um, so, well, the number of syllables and stress. You can also make it competitive. Um, so, for example. Well, basically what happens is, so if we look at the word here, vegetable, you've got one student and one chair equals one syllable. Um, so you can say the word vegetable, so the stressed syllable, not the stressed student, but the stressed <laughs> syllable, has to stand up, and the unstressed syllable, they sit down. So we can visually see it, it's vegetable, okay? Um, the same here, if it's two syllables, you can have hotel, and so the, the stressed student stands up, and the, or the stressed syllable stands up, and the other sits down, okay? From what position are they beginning? Uh, 
you, well, if, are, they, are they sitting to begin? You could you could do that. Or they, they could be standing and you shout you can say out a word. So if I say vegetable, then they have to organize themselves. Then I'll say another word and then they have to reorganize themselves. Um, it's really good as well if you do it uh, so two kind of teams against each other so that the students are calling out the words because then you can say if they say vegetable, vegetable, but I've only got three syllables and you're telling me four and you're saying table, so we can see by the pattern that what the students are hearing, uh, that we can see, okay, there's a breakdown again, so let's fix this, let's see it, where the stress is, okay? Um, it's actually really fun if you do it as a kind of, a, especially for two syllable words, if, because you can have more uh, more pairs, and you call you call out the word, and then so everyone's quick, 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 what are we doing? You sit down, I stood up, okay, grand. And then it's like a competition, um, and, uh, and that can be really fun as well. Okay, um, the last one here is the board run. So I think a lot of people use maybe an A to Z board run, you know, for the alphabet, for vocabulary and things like that. Um, here, you can use this for, for, for stress or you could use it for, for sounds as well. So you divide your, your board in half. You've got your two teams. Um, and then again, you do exactly the same on both sides. So we have our two syllable wor uh, words. Uh, the first one with the first syllable stressed, the second with the second syllable stressed. Um, your students line up, um, and there's a couple of different ways you could do it, but let's say the teacher calls out a word, students have to run up, oh my god, which, which, where is it, yeah, which one is it? is it, does it belong to, they write up the word, then the teacher calls out another one, the student runs back, gives the pen to the next student, they go to the back, so it's like a relay, and then you can keep calling out the words. Um, again, you can do it with if you if you want to distinguish between two different sounds rather than stress patterns, you can do that as well. Um, and also, I always like to not just be the teacher, the teacher. I like to get the students to call out the words because at the end of the day, it's not just them listening to me; it's them having to produce them themselves. Okay. Um, so yes, that can be quite fun as well. And of course, it's it's very competitive and. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, some of the, the activities I got from, from Gerald Kelly, everybody I think knows this and how to teach pronunciation. And uh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you.